The Gotthard Base Tunnel in Switzerland is the longest railway tunnel in the world. The 57 km journey takes less than 20 minutes. But we travelled more than two years through a dark tunnel with this corona virus pandemic. Slowly we have begun to see the light at the end of our long journey. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the disciples of Jesus had gone through the darkest moment of their lives when Jesus died on the cross. But the resurrection of Jesus has transformed their lives. Their sharing of the resurrection experience with the rest of the world changed our lives also. Jesus remained with the disciples 40 more days after resurrection, strengthening them in their faith. During this time, Jesus appeared to them, assuring them of his continued presence in their lives. In today's Gospel, we read the story of St. Thomas who did not see Jesus with other disciples. So he tells them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. When Jesus appears, he invites the doubting Thomas to touch his wounds and thereby recognize that he is the Lord. Thomas responded with one of the most beautiful expressions of faith in the entire scripture. My Lord and my God. Through our Easter liturgy, we relive in our time the experience of the apostles. They encountered the risen Lord and then they proclaimed that truth to the rest of the world. The core of our Christian life consists of our encounter with Jesus. Everyone who doubts the resurrection has a friend in St. Thomas the Apostle. Later, St. Thomas traveled to the far away land of India and proclaimed the gospel there. He established seven Christian communities and became a martyr. There are only three churches where an altar is built above the tomb of the apostles. St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, St. Thomas Basilica in Chennai, India, and Santiago Cathedral in Spain. The Lord showed his disciples the signs of the crucifixion which he bore even in his glorified body. It means that the wounds signifying the suffering he endured for our salvation is an eternal mark. It always reminds us of his love for each one of us. In the words of Pope Benedict XVI, he is a wounded God. He let himself be injured through his love for us. His wounds are a sign for us that he understands and allows himself to be wounded out of love for us. In our times, his body, the church, continues to suffer in different parts of the world. Pope John Paul II declared the second Sunday of Easter as Divine Mercy Sunday 
in connection with the revelations received through Saint Faustina Kowalska. This Polish nun was a humble and zealous messenger for Jesus, who is merciful. Only by experiencing and practicing the mercy of Jesus, we can destroy the evil in today's world. As disciples of Christ, we need to experience God's mercy daily. For us, the face of mercy is Jesus himself. We need to experience the presence of the resurrected Jesus as we live in constant fear of the working of evil. The gift of true peace and the mercy was given to the disciples by the resurrected Lord. Let us pray that we should inherit this peace by following in his footsteps every day. Let us offer this peace to the rest of the world so that humanity may learn to live in peace and harmony. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world.